Okay, so here's more stories about uh, the good old carpet cleaning job. It was, it was an interesting system. We used a buffer machine. And everybody expected for me to have, you know, like a steam cleaning mechanism. So they're like, well, what the what is that thing? What are you buffing my floors? It's not a freaking marble. What are you, why are you, why are you using the buffer? I'm like, oh, it's an advanced new technique. You don't need to use heavy water to soak down to the carps. If it does, steam cleaners, they get, it soaks down to the wood and, you know, there's damage and shit. This is a shit I, like, regurgitated from, from my boss. But, uh, I don't know if any of it was true, but, uh, you always had that confrontation that I always had to deal with. You know, I enjoyed using the buffer machine. It was kind of fun. First time I ever tried doing it. So you had to go, so a buffer, whatever, so it was like these handles. This is like a behind this behind view. If you, uh, you're holding on to it and it's spinning, the engines are spinning. If you go up, it'll go to the left. It might be the opposite. I don't really remember. If you go down, it goes to the right. So you just have, you have to be careful on your level in order to just to not move at all to turn. You have to keep level. So the first, the first time you let me try it, we were in this, we were cleaning this ink, this printing press place. Which was kind of hopeless anyways, because there's freaking ink everywhere. It's like hopeless to to clean. I don't know why we're doing that. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, the first time I tried it, I instantly went, Whoom! I couldn't balance it right, and it went right into this photocopier machine. It didn't break it, but, and then he just he just was like, well, maybe we'll try that again later. In the beginning, I just would follow him to jobs and help him uh, just do random stuff, like lift stuff, or I would spray all around. And I always question, I'm like, why Why is he paying me to do this? Uh, but eventually, he just threw me on my own with no... With, I wasn't ready. I don't think I was ready at the time. Um, he just threw me out to do jobs by myself. And eventually, that was a cool part of the job, is the independence and stuff. But not to be bossed around by this guy. And he was kind of hands-off in general. Except that he would always... So he'd, he would do the scheduling and stuff. I basically... I was the only employee. I basically did the entire... His entire company. Except he, you know, ran ads. And made the phone calls. And the schedule and stuff. So... I mean, I didn't want to do that. But of course, he made, he made a lot of money just off doing that. Uh... So, he would always he would always schedule a few jobs. So this is like a timetable. Maybe there's like some time in between, a little bit of time, and gaps. I I kind of take my time with these jobs. I actually have a pride, and it was one of the few jobs I had pride in my job. Like I like to see the the carpet's perfectly clean, that I did a good job. I always go over something a bunch of times if it's not cleaning and. If it's not getting out, and then that, and then you only know for sure that it can't. And I always feel bad if, if something didn't couldn't come out. I'm like, oh god, I'm so sorry, because it's always tough. Because always on the phone, they ask they ask my boss. They're like, oh, I have a I have a Kool Aid stain. Is that gonna be able to come out? And no matter no matter what kind of stain it was, he's like, oh yeah, that'll come out for sure. Yeah, we'll go over there. Because of course he wanted the business. But then here I am at this place trying to get the stain that isn't, I know before I even start, I can't get it out. So there's always that kind of uncomfortable situation. Well, your boss told me you can get it out. Well, we obviously cannot. Um, something I was going to mention. So you'd schedule these jobs and be like, okay, I'm ready for these jobs. And I had to drive in between. So, you know, there's that time. He would just arbitrarily, like, add another job. It's like, oh, I had it. Because he wants more money. I just added this one job. So just do this one really quick. So you can make it to this one. And I know how long, so what's going to take, especially like square footage or something. And I'm like, there is no way. I'm not going to do a worse job for somebody just because you want to squeeze another one in. I can't, I, I like, I can't make myself do that. It's impossible for me. Uh, so eventually I would just would tell each one to be late and I wouldn't be able to finish them all in a day. And then you got pissed off people like that. So it's just like, even the part he was supposed to do, he would screw up because he was just so greedy. So, there's a few interesting customer stories. Um, I'm going to tell them one more about my boss. So, 
once in a while he had somebody else work with me, which I hated because he split up the percentages between us. And usually I could just do all those jobs by myself anyways. And usually the other person didn't really help much. Especially this one guy, he gave me this like, so I'm maybe 18 or 19 at this point, And he gives me this like, this really like, nothing against fat people, but he was like fat and like just this missing teeth and stuff. This weird guy who was just really awkward and in person and stuff. He didn't know how to socialize and he also didn't work really well. And I'm getting less, paid less and he's literally in my way sometimes. In fact, I knew one day that he was stoned because he was just like was super slow about doing everything. And I'm like, dude, the cord's in the way. Like, you're just in my fucking way. God damn it. I'm like, are you stoned? I think I even asked him like that. Not like I was against weed, but I was just like, he's like, yeah, I just had a, like a bong hit and I didn't think it was going to be much, but now I'm like really stoned. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> what a shitty situation. He did sell me some cheap weed, which was actually pretty sweet at one point. Um, another job, this is the one I, this is one of my favorite stories about, um, about this job. Um, let's see where to start. So this lady, she had a schedule for a later date because she had a crazy thing occur. As she told me later, um, I guess she was stung with a hornet? in her throat, like inside her throat, or on her throat, something like that. So, she calls the like police or something, like or ambulance, 911 maybe. And she's like, oh, I, uh, I can't, I have this thing stuck in my throat. And uh, so there's this, all this thing, she talks about her ex-husband and I guess her ex-husband messes is affiliated with a phone company or something like that something really weird she's like she's like oh because the, the, the because of the phone line if i wanted to kill myself i wouldn't even be able to call you guys so because she said that they took that as a suicide call and so they like busted down her door and strapped her down and i'm only he hearing this second hand so who knows what it's exaggerated for this while her throat is like stung just like, ah, ah! They're like, do not kill yourself, ma'am. It's not worth it. And so they, so she had this just traumatic experience just the previous day. That was the day I was supposed to come for carpet cleaning. So she rescheduled for the next day. Or I think it was the next day. Yeah, I think so. Because she was like just so emotional. And so I'm just kind of doing my job. I'm trying to clean and stuff. Uh, I'm doing the stairs right here. And she's drinking Jack and Coke. And she says, it's, it's my favorite combination drink. My girlfriends know that I love Jack and Coke. And she's just rambling about stupid stuff and telling me all these stories. She's just like venting like crazy, telling me these weird, other weird stories, which my favorite one of all is that she's like, yeah, I don't, I don't keep shrimp in my freezer anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, because, because my ex-husband... He loves, he loves shrimp. He comes, he'll sneak into my house at night through my window and go into my freezer and steal my shrimp. Steal, he, he'll steal your shrimp. Yeah, because he loves shrimp so much. Oh my God. Please get me the fuck out of here, please. Oh God. So uh, I finished the job and I had to give her the invoice. So I'm looking around the house. It's like a three-story house. I'm like, ma'am, ma'am. And because she was talking about the suicide thing, and she was just fucking crazy, too. I was just like, oh, shit. I hope she didn't fucking kill herself or some shit. Like, this already has been weird enough. Oh, God. But I finally did find her. I I was about to leave, but then I, I thought to look at the po on the porch. And there she was on the porch, like in like a laying, like a laying chair. Just passed the fuck out. Just laying there. And I'm like, I shake her. Which is kind of weird for me to do because I usually don't like doing that. But I need to make sure I get fucking paid. I'm like, ma'am, ma'am, she doesn't wake up. I mean, as far as I know, she could have actually been dead. But, but uh, so I just left an invoice on her table. Hopefully we got paid later for that. I'm sure if, if we didn't get paid, I would have gotten yelled at by my boss anyways. 